And we're back. And if if you're a cat lover like I am, you're going to enjoy this next segment. Uh, our guest for today comes to us by way of Street Cats organization right here in Tulsa. And uh, her name is Kathy Balsinger. Kathy, a little bit about Street Cats. What is it? Well, we're a 501c3 and we're a cat rescue group. So what we do is take in cats that pe people owned cats, they have to give their cat up for some reason or they found a cat and that's where we get our cats. So they can come from anywhere. They can come from anywhere and we do have, um, where our location is, we have a shop where you can shop for cat related items or for your cat but we also have cats there too. Back when uh, Ernest Hemingway was still alive and he wrote of the five-toed cat. Yes. Have you ever had one? Yes, but I think we might have had one in 25 years. You don't see those very often. People breed them, but as far as getting one in the way we get cats, no. <laughs> cats, uh, cats get a bad rep, don't they? They do. They, they do. I mean, for they get their a bad reputation. People think you can't train a cat, mm -hmm. that a cat trains you. Right. Well, any pet does that. But exactly. yeah, you can train a cat, can't you? You can. And if anyone's seen the segment on uh, America's Got Talent, you will know because people, they were from, I think they were from Ukraine or somewhere, brought these trained cats, and it was amazing. They did everything dogs did. So you can. Any, any unusual cat ever come your way? Um, I don't know about unusual. Uh, you do have pictures of some of our cats, and one came without an eye. He has one eye. He, he will come up in, in your but pictures. But it's a beautiful white cat. It's a, it's a, yes, and his name is Sam. So he, we will treat any cat, any cat that comes to us, we get everything done to it. I mean, we've had cats that had many problems. We get them up to shape to be adopted, but I wouldn't say so unusual. I mean, we have all kinds of personalities come through our door. Some get along with the other cats, and our cats are not caged. They, we have three different rooms, and the cats are in the different rooms, and they commingle. Some like others better than others, just like people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, there's Sam. Sam's on your picture now. There's Sam. The one and I he care. just doesn't have an eye at all. He wasn't born with one. I really? mean, there was never anything there. Mm -hmm. So he's only had one eye to, to be, learn. To begin with, so they're perfectly fine. Do you ever have abused animals come in? Well, I wouldn't say abused as much as some neglect some neglect, maybe they're way underweight or they weren't taken to the vet and we find many things wrong and the people gave them up but they, we get many reasons for giving up a cat and a lot of times we don't maybe hear the true stories mm -hmm. and I think they just want help for their cats so they want to take them somewhere but they didn't take them to a vet so they might have been 15 pounds and they're down to eight pounds. So it was more, I wouldn't say abuse, but um, people don't realize you need to take a cat in like anything, like yourself or dogs every year to get them checked. Weight wise, you get them shots and everything. That's the only way a cat stays healthy. You know, there's only one cat that I have a problem with uh -huh. and it's the hairless. Oh yeah. And I don't know, I don't understand why, but it bothers me to see a cat, a hairless cat. They look so, they, they're they just so odd looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It almost uh, harkens back to Egyptian times. Oh yeah, that's true. That The statues look like hairless cats. Yeah, they do. They do, they do. They are, they're the, I've seen them in cat shows. We have actually participated at cat shows at the expo. They invited us not to be in the show at all or anything, but to have a booth there and to sell things. And, and the interesting part about it was we got to see all these exotic, crazy looking cats. Did you see this morning's comics in the Tulsa world? I did not. Well, let me share one with you. I, we don't have it to share on camera, but. It was, uh, it, it, John was, was cleaning up his, his home and Garfield, you know, would watch him and he's, he's in there, he cleaned this room, cleaned this room. Finally, he gets over and he says, you know, 
it's so good to have clean floors. And in the final frame, he's yelling at Garfield because Garfield says, well, I'll fix that. And he's over there hacking up a hairball. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Every time I clean uh, my couch's cover, the next day there might be a hairball on it. You, know, <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But you that, never know. that's the way it is. And is, it, is it best to take a cat, or does it matter if you take a cat that's grown, or should you get them when they're kittens? Um, I don't think it makes a difference. If you get it, if you want a cat that's a kitten, you will be going through a kitten stage, and a kitten stage is very hard to go through. They will climb your drapes. They will um, not so much chew up things like puppies, but they have these claws and these teeth that just want to destroy everything. And plus you, mm -hmm. climb up you. And so they act like they're infants. Yeah. You know. So if you get a cat that's older, which in our group, we take in cats eight months to eight years. We have a limit because we don't, we don't want kittens because kittens can take up everything. We want to give the older cats a chance that were already owned, that have gone through a family, that can go back to a family, a forever home. So, so there are limitations. On, in, on what we take. So I can't say if it'd be better to get a kitten or an adult, because kittens are so cute. I gotta ask you this. What's <laughs> the most unusual critter you've ever had brought, brought to you? The most unusual cat? The most unusual, hmm. Anything stand out? I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, but um, I, a, a probably a Persian, which we don't see very many of those, but the flat-faced kitties that are so, I mean, and a lot of them have, they're bred, and a lot of them have sinus problems because mm -hmm. their noses are so flat, they don't breathe real well, and they are just, they're, those are unusual to me. We don't get them very often, but every once in a while we will get a Persian. Will you do me a favor? Yes. Let me know if you ever get a five-toed cat. Oh, okay. I'd just love to see one. You, I have one on my phone. We can, I can show you after, after this segment if you would like. I'd love to see it. I've never seen one. Yeah, actually seen one, okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's back years ago, my wife and I used to travel Mm -hmm. Quite a bit. I mean, by travel, I mean we get in the car and drive to so and so, or go over here and do you know see that. Uh -huh. And without exception, we've found people who are cat owners seem to be more calm, mm. more in touch with their own feelings. I don't know if that's the cat mm. having anything to do with that or not, but with dogs, it's different. Yes. And no, no disrespect for dogs, so don't call me up barking at me. <laughs> but with cat owners, they're a little, a little bit different. I, I tend to agree with that. And the, the volunteers we get, it's that way too. They see, because it's calmer, you, if you volunteer at a dog, and they need as much attention as we mm -hmm. give cats, of course, but it's loud. It's noisy, they're rambunctious, they need a walk, they need this, that, they're very needy, and dogs are wonderful. I've had dogs also. Mm -hmm. But cats just bring out a different personality in people, I think. Like you say, calmness, quietness, and all. I think cats, if they're guilty of anything, which I think they're guilty of this, they make you feel sometimes incredibly insignificant. That's that's true. That's very true. They're, they're, you're their world. We're, they're not our world. We're their world. They put us in, in that perspective, I should say. we got about a minute and a half. Do okay. you guys need volunteers? We always can use volunteers. Uh, we run two shifts. We're open on Tuesday through Saturday, 1030 to 5. We do a morning shift and the afternoon shift. And we get a lot of students getting their hours, their community hours through us. We always can use volunteers. We have a volunteer application you can, and we'd like the volunteers to come to us to see the facility and see what we're like before they And give you a in. chance to see what they're like. Yes, they have to don't... fill out an application. Yeah, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. How are we on time? We got about a minute? 
I think so. Okay, you have a website. Yes. Folks can go to your website, Street Cats. Yes. And draw any information they might need. And there's also a phone number they can call. Yes. What are your hours one more time? 1030 to 5, Tuesday through Saturday. We're closed on Sunday and Monday. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for taking time to come in because I know it's not easy. And I love the shirt. <laughs> we, I would have brought a cat, but they're not good travelers. No, they're yeah. not. And they won't, they won't necessarily do what you want them to do when you want when them to do it. When you want them to do it. Yeah, bright lights and things, not, not their thing. <laughs> so. You know, I did a show one time with a full-grown lion. Oh, you did? And uh, I never will forget when they moved one of the cameras, the lion was laying maybe two feet from me. Mm -hmm. They moved the camera. Uh -oh. He didn't know it was coming. And that, li that lion, tame, mm -hmm. up on his feet, ready to do battle. And I went, whoa, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That's scary. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much. We'll Appreciate be in touch. It. Okay. Thank All right. You. We're out of time. Thank you for being a part of it. And get yourself a cat. We'll see you next time.